Hi everyone, I'm Dorian Etienne, an independent product designer, graduated from Ecole Bull, and now I will present you Métissage. Okay, so today my work combines design and crafts, and I really like to take the time to register in a territory, in a culture to observe its history, materials, techniques, and take inf inspiration from it. For me, trip is like a school of life which transforms yourself, makes you grow up, and helps you to build your own way of understanding the world. So experimentation is also at the art of my creation. The new feature of the material are like a kind of library of ideas to me. And from that, I invent new uses. And fundamentally, my approach is as much as eco-friendly as possible, from the design to the production. So during this presentation, I will talk about some project I realized during a six month residency in Taiwan in the National Taiwan Craft Research Institute, the NTCRI. So it's a huge craft center funded by the Taiwanese government to maintain and develop the traditional craft skills of this island. This place is separated in different material studios like bamboo, stone, vegetal lacquer, natural fiber and dyes, wood and ceramic and many others. So I had the chance to experiment a lot of those ancestral know-how which now deepen and nourish my designer skills. In fact, I didn't go there alone, but with Cordelia Faure, a designer who did the same studies as me, and who today resumed to design studies at NCS Atelier while I was setting up my design studio. So a big part of the project I have done in Taiwan, I've been realized in collaboration with her. Since my arrival in Taiwan, I was immersed in novelties and discoveries. I went to Hualien on the west coast of Taiwan. And there, I had the chance to meet and exchange with the Kavalan Aboriginal tribe. These people are experts in the use of the banana fiber. With it, they make traditional clothes, bags, and textiles. So during a week, I learned the traditional way to do the banana fiber. So how to cut the tree, how to peel it, how to extract the fiber. And I saw that the banana flesh is a big waste of these traditional extractions. But it turns out to be interesting for its transparency and its graphic qualities. So after the tinkering process, we found with Cordelia a particular technique to increase the solidity of this plant tissue. And we made this new material. We use the press machine to stabilize the material and make it thinner and stronger. According to some settings about pressure and heat, we created a natural colorful range from white to dark brown. So we designed two lamps and learned a difficult know-how. It's how to bend the bamboo by the heat. So this new material made of banana flesh is highlighted by sober shapes inspired here by the internal structure of the banana stem here at the right. So during day off, I had the time to travel and visit Taiwan. This project came to my mind when I was in the Lukang city. I, will, I was look, walking in the Lukan market and saw an old lady selling some loofah on the ground. Actually, I already knew this material before. I saw that this fiber was very common in Taiwan because it's traditionally used as exfoliating sponges. In fact, the loofah comes from the inside of, of some squash. Harvested without damaging the ground, 
these natural fibers leave few roots and reproduce quickly. So it guarantees a low ecological impact. And that's why I wanted to explore its qualities and give it new uses. This material tinkering had revealed a lot of interesting qualities. The shock absorption, the lightness, sound and thermal insulation, a bit of translucency, aesthetic of the fibers and shape resiliency. I noticed that when we press it and then put it into water, the loofah resumed its original shape. Then I created a range of one wine bottle packaging. This premium loofah packaging is pressed first before being cut and set around the glass bottles. The concept is, before sending to the distributor or the consumer, the wine merchant will immerse the bottle in the water. So the Lufa case resumed to its expanded state in a few minutes by shape resiliency. Then the shock absorption qualities are increased and ensure safe transport without using polystyrene or other industrial materials. It also keeps the freshness for cold drinks. And finally, the packaging, once the packaging has been removed, the loofah can be recycled as a sponge or biodegradated. Another great quality is the strength of the loofah. I noticed that pressed loofah fibers interweave to form a kind of single frame without any glue addition. This process allows to maintain, to obtain, sorry, a new very resistant material of infinite length and thickness and which fits comfortably the shape it received. Of course, after a while, the loofah part risks to be damaged according to the use of the consumers. So here, the eco-design concept is that the loofah seat was thought to be easy to remove and replace. Indeed, this piece is fixed on the aluminum structure with leather links, so it's easily reversible. So the consumer who buy the chair will benefit of a lifetime warranty so we can send back to the damaged parts to the factory for free. And this factory have only to put it into water to separate fibers and repress them again in a new seat. So there is no waste. For this project, I met a local metal factory thanks to the craft center. And it was a welding factory for bicycle frames who prototyped it. One of the main reasons why I came in Taiwan was to learn more about the bamboo work. After a few months and a short time in Japan, I observed the diversity of shapes and uses that can be done with this amazing material. The thing that attracts me the most about bamboo is that it's one of the last material that still resists to industry standardization. And Bruno Munari explained it very well. He said, bamboo is like vegetable profile, a green tube provided with some internal partitions, witnesses of its growth speed. And nature offers it to us for free in all size and already varnished. So this collection comes from a simple observation. I noticed that the interior bamboo shape between the nodes are very interesting for its unique graphic curves. So here it's a whole bamboo lamp. The light is diffused through a thin bamboo veneer extracted by a mechanical turning process. These lamps are easy to open thanks to a magnet system which allows to change the lead strip inside. So I developed this focus on bam bamboo row curves through a range of lamps, but also mirrors and pencil cases. So this collection wish, wishes to honor those hiding, hidden natural patterns.
In fact, I, I really like to let nature speak by itself, by leaving its raw, its materials. So then all the pieces are unique and the object created is, in my opinion, more sensible. This residency also allowed me to prototype my diploma project by my own hands. I, I noticed that today the world's population suffers from a real lack of sleep. But sleep is not a waste of time, as many people mistakenly think. But it's, it's a basic need. So Nick's proposed solution. This sleep object materialized an approved scientific method inspired by, by the traditional Chinese medicine. It allows to easily optimize our sleep for better recovery by increasing our restful deep sleep time. This method is based on the respect for, of our biological sleep cycles and it's just a matter of finding few markers and to follow them. Then the body will adjust itself and the sleep will be optimized over the weeks. For example, by sleeping only, only four hours and a half, set to our biological rhythm, we will recover more than by sleeping eight hours in basic sleep. So these sleep aids simplify the, this new method and make it understandable. They are interactive, sleep friendly, and of course, and they work by magnetization. So th this project is kind of a loophole for active people who no longer listen to their body by making their sleep more efficient. It allows us to respond to our current way of life. So after its residency in April 2000, uh, 2019, Cordelia and I came back to Paris and met our past design teachers. And we discussed a bit about our experience in Taiwan and explained that they have to do something with uh, there with the Ecole Boule. So we organized together a 15 day workshop for DNA design class of 14 students on the topic of some traditional Taiwanese materials. So we choose mulberry paper and betel nut. So we supervised this event last November and created a mixed group of two French designers and two Taiwanese craftsmen to experiment and develop new products. So that's all for me. Thank you for listening. If you want to know more about my works, I let you check my profile page on Isola Design Community. Maybe follow my Instagram because it's where I post the most on my works and have a look on, of my website. So my last word will be, even if it's difficult during this strange period, if you have the opportunity to travel in Taiwan, really don't hesitate because it's really nice and beautiful country just between Japan and China for the culture, but only with the advantages of both. So a very big thanks to Isola Design District for this great initiative and to Pietro for the presentation support. Thank you.